Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors at Cozy Earth. Cozy Earth are the softest sheets that you will ever sleep in. In fact, I actually owned Cozy Earth sheets before they sponsored this podcast. So, I mean, that's all you really need to know. Um, they're also environmentally friendly. Go to CozyEarth.com and use code Holly to get 35% off site wide. My guest today is kind of a podcast newbie. She did one interview a while ago, but it's been a minute. So I'm very excited to have her here. Um, she's absolutely gorgeous. I've shot her for my bombshell of the month series for hollyrandall.com. And she is dominating the porn industry right now. She took home countless awards this year, including Expo's Performer of the Year, Welcome, Vanna Bardot. Thank you. So good to see you. Good to see you. Can I just say I'm very excited. I'm a big fan of the podcast. Really? I've told you this before, but yeah, I've been listening to your podcast for years. Wow. Yeah, like I'm a very big fan. So I was really happy when you asked me to come on here. I'm always like surprised when... Like, why didn't you tell me that I should have not had I, you I almost was thinking about, I almost was going to hit you up actually like the week before. And then I just like was really busy mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I'm just going to wait. And, yeah. and then, and then you hit me up and I was like, yes. Yeah, I know. Because when I, sometimes when I, you know, talk to people, cause I saw you at the browsers party, mm -hmm. I'm like, wait, why the fuck haven't I had her on? Like, what was I, what was I thinking? <laughs> Um, cause obviously we've worked together quite a few times. Yeah. You're fucking gorgeous and amazing. Thank and I'm you. so excited to have you here. <laughs> so here you are. So, um, Vanna, uh, I guess, you know, let's start at the beginning as we, we often do. Um, how did you get into the adult industry? Um, so I had quite a fascination with the adult industry from, pretty uh, young age it's, it's probably not very kosher for me to say but I mean I had been watching like the AVN awards on Showtime since I was like 16 mm -hmm. um I was really fascinated about it, about it I mean I'd been watching porn for a lot longer than that like I know it's we don't want that but you know it's just it kind happens. of the truth of my generation yeah. is you know we were really the first ones to have so much unlimited access to the mm -hmm. internet and you know it is what it is but um yeah I just always had a really big fascination with like all forms of sex work whether it was porn or stripping or escorting burlesque dancers cam girls like everything I was just really interested in it um and so I had been working as a hair salon assistant from when I was like 15 to 18 and I thought that's what I was going to go into. And by the time I turned 18, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I want to live my life. I want to do what I want. And I decided, I decided to start um, pursuing uh, camming and stripping. And by the time I turned 19, I decided to go into professional porn. Mm -hmm. And looking back now, how do you feel about getting into the industry at that age? Because obviously there's a lot of discussion around whether or not that's too young, whether or not it's fine because it's legal age. Mm -hmm. What was your experience? For sure. I think about that a lot. Um, I mean, it would be really, it's really hard for me to say that being able to join the industry at such a young age is a bad thing because for me it was so positive. Like I can't imagine where I would be if, I didn't enter at that age. Um, you know, when I had started like stripping and camming, that was okay, but like stripping wasn't like the best environment for me to be in. And porn was like so much healthier for me. And I think about like, where would I be if I'd started when I was 21 rather than 19? And I mean, it's all about like your mindset and like where you're at. I had a really like healthy understanding of like what I was doing and, you know, boundaries and of course like nothing was perfect but for me like it really felt like where I needed to be of course it's not the case for a lot of other girls but mm -hmm. it's, you know there's a plenty of other girls who get in when they're 20 24 30 and you know it doesn't go super well either so yeah, yeah. Make, they make bad decisions then yeah I mean I think that we can all agree that people have varying levels of emotional maturity right yeah for sure yeah so so your experience was overall pretty good when you entered like yes. you didn't have 
you didn't start off with like a shitty agent who like totally fucked you. Oh no, I had a pretty shitty okay. agent. You do he, have the you do have the try. shitty agent origin yeah. story. As oh many yeah, do. <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah. My agent, he he never tried to like fuck with me, but he definitely tried to fuck with my money. And mm -hmm. yeah, he's not quite around anymore. But um, yeah, I definitely had to deal with that. You know, like even though I was really mature when I got in and I did like all my research. I watched like every documentary about porn. I listened to the good and the bad. I, you know, tried to learn as much as I could before getting in. But like ultimately at 19, like I didn't know shit about contracts and mm -hmm. my agent presented me like a, a four year contract. And I thought that meant, oh, he thinks I'm going to be working for four years. Amazing. Not quite the case. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just I didn't have quite, quite the splash I, I was hoping to make in my first year compared to like a lot of other girls in like my I guess like generation or like class mm -hmm. of porn stars mm -hmm. um and after like six months of um being signed I wasn't really getting that much work anymore I kind of ran through all like the new girl companies and mm -hmm. those kind of scenes and I wasn't getting the kind of work I wanted and I was like hey like what what can I do? Like, do I need to change my look? Like, literally, like, I told him my goals. I was like, this is where I want to be. And um, he was just – didn't really care. Um, so, yeah, I was able to buy out of my contract for a very pretty penny. And, I mean, it wasn't great, but it's the best de decision I made because otherwise I can't imagine where I'd be if I didn't switch to the agency I'm at now. Right, right. So when you first started in the industry, you had braces. Yeah. <laughs> so did you like really lean into that? I assume that you probably did a lot of teen scenes, right? Yeah. So when I got in, it wasn't ideal. Like originally I wanted to wait until like after I had my braces off until like I got like all the little like work that I wanted. But I was like, you know what? Like I'm going to be making like so much more money so much more quickly um, shooting scenes than stripping and camming. Um, so... Yeah, I was like, I might as well um, kind of exploit this, like, fetish that people really like and try to, like, milk mm -hmm. as much out as I can, like, starting looking super young and then, mm -hmm. you know, grow into the performer I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I realized pretty quickly that, again, I wasn't getting the work I wanted because of how I looked. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I had to kind of grow out of that one. But, yeah, I was doing a lot of teen, a lot of – uh, brace face. I was getting, I was like really like kind of, uh, what's the word? Kind of pigeonholed into like the same characters. I was always like the naive virgin yeah. who didn't know what she was doing, which was yeah. like so the opposite of me. Like mm -hmm. I had always been so sexual from a really early age. So yeah, I just did not like getting uh, typecasted like that at all. Yeah. I mean, were there any scenes that you were presented with when you were just like... This is a little... Yeah, there is one. It's actually, like, quite hilarious. Um, I didn't... Wasn't very happy about doing it at first, but by the end of the scene, I was like, this is so funny. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to, like, really lean into the comedy of this. Mm -hmm. But um, they wanted me to wear headgear. Oh, no. Yeah, they had this, like, <laughs> fake headgear that, like, wasn't <laughs> attached to my actual braces or anything. <laughs> and I just felt, like, so ugly and I yeah it, by the end of the scene I was like this is the funniest scene I've ever done but I definitely did not feel very uh sexy to say the least. god that is I don't think I've ever seen porn with headgear before mm -hmm. and I feel like I've seen it all yeah my headgear was supposed to get stuck on the kitchen sink and oh you know, it was a stuck scene yes, with headgear and what did my stepbrother do being so helpful. I mean, he he wouldn't help you like get unstuck. No. He has to have sex with you yeah, because the you're the only natural solution. <laughs> you know, the problem solving that we do in porn is just like sometimes really like next yeah. level. It's just <laughs> innovative. God. So, um Tell me a little bit about your family. Um, your mom, I think you said that she was kind of like a borderline nudist, right? Yeah, growing up? yeah, her and my grandma. Um, so I come from a very, like, internationally diverse family. Mm -hmm. My mom is French. My dad is Brazilian. My grandma from my mom's side is Swiss. Um, on my dad's side, it's um, – there is Italian and Argentinian. So I have family, like, all over the place. Um, but I – had really open parents. Um, 
I had like the sex talk at a very early age. My mom gave me the talk at like 10, which is arguably like very early for most children, I guess. But did you, you know, feel like it was early for you? Or? No, I mean, for me, it made sense, especially mm-hmm. like I grew up in Miami. And um, when she saw like my older brother go to like middle school, like the middle school he was at was like pretty crazy. And there was mm-hmm. like already kids like having threesomes in the bathrooms and like just crazy shit. And, you know, my mom was like, you know, she 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 was not stupid or anything. Not mm-hmm. that like I was already doing stuff at that age. But, but she saw like that you were being exposed to things that maybe needed context. Yeah. And she was like, you are not getting pregnant under <laughs> this ha- household. She literally told me, she was like, if you get pregnant, I'm snatching that shit out of you myself. <laughs> so yeah, that's definitely the kind of parents I had. But yeah, my mom was really open about like nudity and sexuality and we just always had a very open dialogue at home um I remember like coming out to her when I was like 13 I think about being bi and she's like oh sweetie I know I've seen her search history (laughs) um so yeah I feel really fortunate to like have parents who are really open like that do you think that having parents like that and having um that kind of education from a young age actually helped you make like better decisions when you were older and got into the adult industry, you know, cause we hear about some people who come in and they're so naive to sex and Mm -hmm. all of that because they're raised in such a strict household and weren't told anything. So they come into this industry and they're just like so clueless. And then unfortunately like they have, they learn, you know, while they're working, which is not necessarily the best place to learn about sex. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think coming into this industry, like, I had already been very, like, sexual since high school. Um, And, you know, my mom was, she was, like, the mom and mean girl. She was, like, I'd rather you do it at home. Mm -hmm. And she's, like, here, like, I'll buy you a box of condoms. But, like, I'd rather know that you're safe and if you have any questions. And she actually explained to me that porn is, because when she realized I was also watching Mm -hmm. pretty like crazy porn at a young age she explains to me she's like porn is a fantasy this is make-believe this is not what making love is and you know while porn is is great it's not a accurate representation of you know what usually happens between like a man and a woman or a woman and a woman or a man and a man so yeah that's really like that's really profound I mean I mean you don't, <laughs> you almost never hear that Yeah, coming from people's parents. So yeah. when they, when you told her that you were doing porn, what was the reaction? Yeah, she was one of the first persons I told. Um, I told her after I came out to LA, I shot for two weeks and one of my last shoot, shoots, it was for Barely Legal Magazine mm-hmm. with Dave Naz. And it was like the first like real like photo shoot I had been on and um and at the end at the end of the day I called her and I was like yeah so uh I I shot some like photos with a photographer and she's like okay what kind of photos and I'm like you know it was like nude ones but they were like very classy and <laughs> <laughs> barely legal sorry <laughs> sorry hustler <laughs> love you guys well but... they, they were pretty cute honestly like it was compared yeah. to like some of the other Scenes I had been sh- like, you know, the scenes, with the, with the, the photos I was doing on set. Yeah, it was like I felt like, oh, like it was like a proper photo shoot, and and Dave Naz is a good photographer. Yeah, and I like yeah. I looked at his work, and I I really liked it. So yeah, I, um, I told her about it, and I didn't quite tell her I was like doing like porn, mm-hmm. but yeah, eventually I told her about it, and she was super open. Like she always knew that I had really like good head on my shoulders, and that I knew what I was doing, and that. I was safe and mm-hmm. yeah, she was not very worried. My grandma actually was my biggest cheerleader. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What I sent she- her like all, not all of my photos, but I sent her like when I got penthouse and like, I'll send her all my like really like classy photos yeah. and yeah. That's so great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They love it. <laughs> That's really cool. And I assume that they are probably pretty proud of how far you've gotten in the industry today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. 
So speaking of where you've gotten into the industry today, um, you took some pretty serious hardware home during the awards season yeah. uh, earlier this year. Um, how did it feel to win two XBiz and two ABN awards? Um, it was crazy. I mean, being back at like AVN for the first time this year, like in person mm -hmm. and getting to go up on stage was like such a crazy feeling because when I got started in porn, I told myself, if I'm going to do this, like I want to go all the way. Mm -hmm. I want to be on that stage taking home awards. I don't want to be one of those girls who just like comes and shoot, shoots a few scenes and disappears. I'm like, right. that's not going to be worth it. Um, so I had already like won some awards before, but to be back like in person and be on that stage it and it just, it, it just was like so exhilarating and you know, I, I love it. It like gives me something to like push myself towards and look forward to. Yeah. So, yeah. And then Expos was crazy. Like I did not expect to take home performer of the year. Like that was next level. Like I really was not expecting it to happen until I had one, I already got on stage to accept two awards. And then Cody was like, he's like, you should probably start preparing like your speech. Like you're going to win performer of the year. And I was like, no way, like shut the fuck up. And he even like turned on his camera and started like recording as we're an announcing it. And I'm like, stop it. That's so embarrassing. You're not going <laughs> to say my name. And, and then they did. And yeah, it was like, such did he a get your moment. did he get your reaction? He did, he did yeah. But oh my God. it was such a pivotal moment because like I never thought that yeah. I could win an award like that. My biggest aspiration was just to be nominated for Best New Starlet when I started mm -hmm. in the industry. I was like, if I do that, then you know what, I made it far enough. Mm -hmm. And to win something like Performer of the Year was like just unbelievable. Do you, do you remember what your speech was? Like, I mean, you hadn't prepared a speech, right? Yeah. So like what did you say when you got up there? Um you know, I think I think the first people I think were my agents because mm -hmm. I don't think like I'd be here without them. Mm -hmm. um, they really like I when I came to them, I told them exactly where I wanted to be. I did the same thing with my first agent, but he mm -hmm. didn't listen to me. But when I signed I with, I think I know ATMLA, who your first agent is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but when I signed with ATMLA, I told them I was like, "These are the companies I want to work for. Like, this is where I want to go." And they listened to me and they did what they could to like push me in that direction. And yeah, like I, I thanked all the companies I've worked with mm -hmm. and uh, I think Cody and mm -hmm. yeah, I'm like blanking on what else I said, but yeah. <laughs> and then how did you celebrate that night? Um, I went out. Yeah. I went out to like a little like after party that was happening and then, yeah, then I just went home. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so for those who don't know, what exactly did you win that year? So obviously, Expos Performer of the Year. Yeah. What were the other awards you won at Expos, and what did you win at AVN? Um, at Expos, I also won Best – the the categories at um, Expos are a little interesting. Um, but I won Best All Sex Scene. Okay. Um, and then Best – I don't know if it was Best Gonzo Scene, but I won a scene with um, – with uh, Seth Gamble and another mm -hmm. one that was for um, Black Draw that was like this huge orgy that mm -hmm. also won best orgy at Avian. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And at Avian, I won best girl girl scene with Joanna Dior. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, do you like, I mean, you said that the awards were like motivating to you. Like, how mm -hmm. important to you are the awards? Um, I will say I do, like, care about them. Like, they're not, you know, it's not the ends all be all, but I know for me it's, like, a nice, like, thing to motivate myself. Like, I am kind of a competitive person. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up doing, like, dance and, you know, you went to competitions and all that. So it's, like, I tried getting back into dance now as an adult, and it feels kind of pointless because I'm, like, there's nothing that, like – You're not going to win anything? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing that, like, I'm working towards. There's no yeah. big recital. There's no right. big competition. <laughs> so I don't know. For me, like, after – especially, like, after, you know, this award season, I was immediately, like, okay, what do I want for this next year? Like, already planning, like, what am I going to do? And, you know, for me, it's it's fun, honestly, but it's not, like – if I don't win something, it's going to floor me either. You're so. not crying in the bathroom? Yeah. Every year at the awards, there's always some girl crying in the bathroom because <laughs> she didn't win, like, whatever it is she really wanted. Yeah. I always feel so bad for them. <laughs> 
As somebody who like never wins awards, I'm always like, it's okay. It's yeah. Fine. Like life goes on. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we're going to come back to talk about the things that Vanna has done this year that will probably land her in the award nomination category once again. So stick around. We'll be right back. After a long day of shooting beautiful naked women or just interviewing them for this podcast, I am in dire need of a good night's rest. So this is when I dive right into my cozy earth sheets and dream about my amazing job. These sheets are like cuddling with a cloud. They're not just soft, they're sustainably sourced, hypoallergenic, and did I mention incredibly cozy? Cozy earth bedding is temperature regulating and it comes with a 10 year warranty. These are the kind of sheets that are going to make you want to hit the snooze button repeatedly, which of course is impossible for me these days, but one can dream about sleeping in someday. And on that day, you can bet I'll be snuggling in my Cozy Earth bedding. Now Cozy Earth has an exclusive offer for my listeners, up to 35% off site-wide when you use code HOLLY. That's CozyEarth.com, code HOLLY for 35% off site-wide. All right, guys, we are back. So, of course, we want to talk about your new movie, Influence, um, through Vixen Media Group. It's a five-part crossover series that has your first anal and your first double penetration. Yes. Um, so before we get to the fun the fun parts, what is the movie, like, in general about? So the movie is loosely based on some elements of my life, um, but so my character in Influence, she is – she wants to open a sex club mm-hmm. and she wants to stray away from her father's uh, line of work. Um, so she decides to go off on her own and open the sex club, but it's not doing super well. She doesn't have the kind of clientele that she wants. It's kind of like kind of dingy. And she's like, OK, like how how are we going to figure this out? Um, how are we going to elevate this? And her and her business partner decide to reach out to this influencer to try and get some uh, sponsorship from him. And that kind of leads her down this rabbit hole of other uh, problems and solutions to ultimately elevate the club to where she wants to be. Mm -hmm. So what you said, it's loosely based on your life. Like what parts are... So the element of the sex club, originally it was, we were thinking about partnering. I So I work pretty closely with a production company called, um, not really a production company, but um, this like private members club in LA called Kinky, Kinky Rabbit Club. Oh yeah, dude. Okay, so there I follow them mm-hmm. and they're like photos and I don't know, all the stuff that they put out there is really well done. Yeah. Like, really well done. Yeah. Alina, the woman who created it and runs everything, like, she's truly, like, such an artist. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, originally when we were thinking about stories for the showcase, we wanted to um, to have that involved in some way. And um, ultimately, we ended up using the concept of the club um, to have that as kind of like the backdrop for the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, yeah, this, the beginning of the story that shows kind of my background with my dad is very dramatized, but it is a true. Um, Mm. he was like a pretty prolific, like, uh, distributor in Miami of, of sorts. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, Probably when I, not a distributor of diapers or mm-mm. baby wipes no, or no phone cases. Yeah. Something else maybe. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, <laughs> when I, Caden Cross is the one who actually wrote the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had sat down with her and told her about my life and she pulled that as inspiration for the movie. So wow. yeah, but the whole part about uh, me pulling off this like whole heist and everything, not, based on my (laughs) real life (laughs) are you are you still close to your dad or are you close I'm very close yeah I'm very close with both of my parents that's great yeah wow how did your dad we sorry I don't want to jump back but how did your dad react to you being born he was not uh quite as thrilled as uh my mother naturally Mm -hmm. um 
yeah, at first he thought that I was escorting because he found like a, I had a notebook with like rates written down and like girl, girl and boy, girl and boy, girl, girl. And he, yeah, he thought I was escorting and I told him like, no, I'm shooting porn, but it's really safe. And then I, I also lied. I said, oh, I'm just shooting, I'm just shooting with girls because I try to make it seem so much better. And yeah, yeah he was not happy for a while, but naturally like. He calmed down, and I think he was mostly concerned because of my look at the time. Like, mm. I l had the braces, and I looked so young, mm -hmm. and, like, he was like, I know the kind of porn that you're probably making. It's not like you're a dominatrix. Mm -hmm. Like, that would be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think he liked the idea of, like... Um, you being taken advantage of. Yeah, yeah. but he, he realized pretty quickly that I was very safe. You know, I had an agent, and it was a very, like, professional business. I wasn't doing anything, like... Okay. CD, but yeah, you know, and I don't think any father is going to be. Uh, I think the dads generally take it harder than, yeah. than the moms do. Yeah. From what I've heard. Um, okay, so back to mm -hmm. <laughs> the movie. Um, so you did your first uh, anal and your first double penetration. Yes. So I guess. What, tell us about the anal first. We'll start yeah. slow. <laughs> <laughs> Just one old. <laughs> Warm it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so the first scene in the movie is my first anal ever. Um, ever on film. Yes, ever on film. Okay. Yeah. Um, I uh, I honestly, like, never knew if I was going to really do anal or not. Like, mm -hmm. I almost did pretty early in my career, but... Um, just because I thought it was something I had to do and mm -hmm. I backed out of it cause I realized I wasn't ready and I'm really glad I did. Cause now I had a very amazing, uh, um, way to do it. Um, but yeah, it's with Maximo Garcia. Um, it, it, it went amazing. It was very smooth. It was really enjoyable. Um, Yeah. Did you get, did you choose him for a specific reason or um, was that just kind of we, guy? We had to like think about how this was going to work with like the characters in the movie too. Right. But I had a list, a very short list of guys that, because the movie's all anal. Um, so I had a very short list of guys who I was like, com I would feel comfortable working with them. And it was my first time working with Maximo, but... Um, I had heard a lot of good things about him that he was very good with anal. So mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Is he circumcised? Um, I don't remember actually. <laughs> <laughs> Means probably yes. I've just heard that like uncircumcised penises are easier. For yes. Anal. And I can actually definitely confirm that, but interesting. Yeah. Um, so that was your first anal. Yes. How did you prep for that? Um, so I trained for like months beforehand to like make sure this was something I could actually do because the reason why I never thought I was going to do anal is because I just never had any good personal experiences in my mm -hmm. life. And I was like, how are girls doing this for 40 minutes on camera? Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? Um, and I was like, there's no way I can do this if I'm going to be in pain the whole time. And I finally started having some like amazing experiences in my personal life that made me be like, whoa maybe this is something I can actually do. Um, so once I got to that point, I started training pretty regularly with like, you know, the butt plug dilator kit. And I was practicing with, with Cody, with like another guy. And yeah, I just like got to the point where I was like, okay, I think I can do this. So you said that you started to have some really amazing anal experiences in your personal life. Mm -hmm. What do you think facilitated that? What made them amazing? Um, well, with one person, like, he was like, hey, like, this is kind of like my forte. I am pretty good at, like, easing girls <laughs> into this. I am the inner <laughs> um, So I was like, okay, like, this is something I'm, like, really interested in. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, I definitely, it, those experiences definitely kind of taught me, like, once I figured out, like, what felt good and how to get there, then I was able to like apply that with other people too. And what did this like? What did this anal extraordinaire master like? What did he do to um, like make it so great? I don't know. We just went like really slow, okay. and I wasn't like anything like that special. Um, but yeah, I don't know. His, his dick was like pretty like great for anal. Like not mm -hmm. all guys have good anal dicks. Mm -hmm. What um, makes a good anal dick? <sighs> 
I mean, I don't know. I guess it's different for every girl. Obviously, uncircumcised is definitely, like, best because, mm-hmm. like, the uh, – I don't know. You know how some dicks are, like, really hard and, mm-hmm. like, other dicks are – you know, they get hard, but they're still, like, have a little, like, bit give. Of squish around them. A little them. bit of give, yeah. Yeah, like, that's, like, the best because when a dick is, like, just too hard in your ass, like, it's great in your pussy because it, like, you know, hits your G-spot mm-hmm. and – but in the ass, it's, like, not as mm-hmm. great, so – yeah, and I know for me, it's, like, I can't handle, like, super, super thick dicks. Like, mm-hmm. there were definitely, like, some more – within my movie, like, all the scenes were great, but some were more challenging than others mm-hmm. just because of, you know, my partner's, like, girth and mm-hmm. size and – yeah. Okay, so uh, not as girthy. Yeah. The chemistry is honestly, like, I think the most important uh, right. factor. Like, yeah. if I have really great chemistry with somebody, then, like, it's so much easier than – Somebody that I'm just kind of like, yeah, you know, because I mean, ultimately it's a muscle, right? So the yeah. more we relax, yeah. the better experience we're going to have. Mm-hmm. A lot of times bad anal experiences are attributed to just being nervous and uptight. And yeah. if your partner can't make you feel relaxed, then it's generally not going to be a good experience. Yeah. I also learned and like I always think about this. So I learned from Lucy Hart because when she was talking about like going through her transition um, she was talking about like there's this like butthole doctor in New York. <laughs> I swear to God, like this is so, it was such an eye opening experience. That's why I love this podcast. I learned so much. So apparently, like you can have your anal cavity modified to take dick better. Yeah. So I right. guess some people can do better anal because their anal cavity is more straight. Yeah. And then others like are at a diagonal. I heard there's like um there's they, like, like a bend. second like. Um, there's like a second like valve. I don't know if that's the yeah, right word, but like second dimension. Yeah, there's like a second kind of like sphincter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that like that's like the hard part to yeah. to get through to like go super deep. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Right. So apparently he can like I don't know fix your anal cavity wow. so you can like take dick better. Yeah, because I'm so jealous of girls who just have like easy assholes. Like I do not have an easy <laughs> asshole. Like it was really like in my 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 routine going up to it is like. Very delicate. Like, yeah. if I don't do what I need to do, like, yeah. I'm, yeah, like, I need to be in the perfect situation for it to happen. Um, but other girls are like, yeah, I just, like, you know, kind of clean out a little day of and then just, like, pop a dick in there. And Some girls prefer it. Yeah, I'm like, I have to do so much stretching. Yeah. If I don't stretch properly, like, it's going to be way harder. Yeah, I'm so jealous of girls with flexible, stretchy assholes. <laughs> <sighs> I remember Katsuni was someone that, um, Katsuni, not Katsumi, because these are two different people. She was French, actually. Mm. Um, and uh, she preferred anal. It Actually, sometimes vaginal sex would, like, hurt her. Yeah. And she almost always wanted anal sex. Yeah, and I've I heard that from remember... so many big anal girls. And I'm like, yeah. wow. Like, what? But, yeah. So now you know. So go to this doctor's name. I don't know who he is. Go listen to the Lucy Hart <laughs> episode. He maybe names him. I don't I don't remember. Um, she maybe names him. Sorry. Okay. Um, so... Double penetration. Yes. Now, okay, so you've conquered, like, the – I mean, that's – like, you're really setting goals here. Okay, yeah. anal seemed like a big hurdle for you to overcome. Yeah. So, like – So, when we initially – How did you do two? Yeah. So, when we initially first started talking about the movie um, and doing, like, a showcase of my first anal, um, we knew that we wanted to make it an all-anal showcase. I waited so long to do anal. We're like, like hey, let's just go all out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had joked about, like during our meeting, I joked about that I would probably enjoy DP more because I've heard about so many girls saying that DP is way better than anal, like just anal. And, um, you know, I like – I had never done a DP in my personal life, but, you know, I've, like, been fucked with, like, a butt plug, and, like, mm-hmm. I love that, and and then they're like, okay, well, what do you think about putting it in there, like, you know, and I'm like, you know what, like, you're right, fuck it, like, let's do it, and, yeah, a DP was the one thing that I had never done in my personal life, like, I knew when we were going to do it for the movie, you know, Cody asked me, he's like, do you want to try it, like, off camera first, like, with another you know, person, like, in me, and I'm, like, I thought about it, but I was, like, you know what, like, if I can, anal was a big thing, I'm, like, I need to know how to do this, Mm -hmm. but the DP, I was, like, I want to save this for, for the camera, because Mm -hmm. I, I knew that I was gonna probably really like it, and Mm -hmm. I did, like, anal can be the most, like, intense orgasm ever, but it also is, like, can be really 
tricky to like get to that point um, because it's such a like overwhelming feeling. Mm -hmm. But when there's like a dick in your pussy at the same time, oh my God, it's like the best feeling ever. Like any of like uncomfort that can come with anal, it's like just gone. Once there's like also a dick in your pussy, it like, I don't know, it it's kind of not distracting from like what's happening in your ass, but I don't know. It just feels so good. Like I'm obsessed with it now. Like I cannot wait until I can do <laughs> another one again. So why do you think that is? Do you think that it just relaxes you more? Yeah. I think it's like that added pleasure mm -hmm. because like sometimes I'm having a difficult time like prepping for, cause I'll like prep with my partner before mm -hmm. an anal scene. Sometimes I'll like, I'll use a Hitachi like to get myself to that first mm -hmm. orgasm. And then it's like, a lot more easier after that so I think it's just that added like sensation of pleasure that really adds to the overall feeling and then yeah. also makes like your ass feel really good yeah so yeah that makes sense I remember um there was a god I can't remember who it was a porn star who was telling me that her trick to anal was actually making herself come with a Hitachi one before yes doing the anal yes. because then it automatically relaxes you mm -hmm. which totally makes sense yeah yeah so um, you were quoting as saying that this showcase profoundly changed your life in so many positive ways. What did you mean by that? Yeah. So um, when uh, I found out like the showcase was going to be confirmed, I really took that as like a sign in my life to like fix some things that I wasn't happy with. Hmm. Um, I had been pretty unhappy with like my body for a while. Um, I had always been like really skinny my whole life. Um, and then in like the past few years, I noticed kind of like, I don't know if it had a correlation, but like after I had COVID, um, my body started changing and I gained a lot of weight, but it wasn't like healthy weight. It was mm -hmm. like, you could just tell, like it was like I, my face was really swollen. My midsection was really swollen and I wasn't eat, like eating unhealthy or anything, but I was partying a lot. And it's like a, sounds like a bloat kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, finally I like went to a doctor and I got diagnosed with PCOS, which stands for um, polycystic um, ovary syndrome. I think this, yeah. Um, wow. But it's basically like a hormone disorder, and I realized like that's the reason why my body was so out of whack. Like I had too much like testosterone in my body which was like leading to weight gain in like certain areas that were really indicative of like a hormone problem and yeah I just was really unhappy with how I looked for a while and I didn't really know what to do um and when I found out I was going to do this movie I was like okay this is really like an opportunity if ever to take control of my life and you know get my body where I want it to be um, and I decided to completely like stop partying, stop going out. I stopped drinking for about a like, few months. I signed up with this amazing um, training program called Ultimate Performance, and mm -hmm. it, it really changed my life. I, I didn't drink for a good two months, and then after that, like I only like went out like once or twice for like a birthday party and mm -hmm. had a couple drinks, but for the majority of it, I just didn't do anything. I just, I woke up at 5 30 AM to go work out. Mm -hmm. I came home. I did everything else I needed to. And it was like, so just so healing for me to like, finally take the time to like focus on my health and my body and like get myself to where I wanted to be. Not just like physically, like, of course, like in the end, like the pictures of my movie really proved where I had gotten to, like, I'd never been in such peak fitness mm -hmm. by just like physically how I felt like inside I felt so much better and yeah it was really like this movie it was kind of like the catalyst for me to be like okay like I need to take control of this and and be a reflection of like the kind of performer that I am right right that makes sense and also I mean <clears throat> you know I do exercise just as much to try to like maintain in physical shape but also like for mental yeah your mental like space and the foods that you eat mm -hmm. and all of that stuff like it all yeah. has to do you know people just think about like fitness and your body and being you know however you want to look but a lot of it has to do with your mind too yeah and like it really was like 
the like I had never really worked out like regularly before that and I ate like healthy but I wasn't really like didn't really know like what was working for my body but I think the thing that made the biggest difference was just like stops partying for yeah. a few months like that like I didn't realize like I mean I did know like it was taking like quite a toll on my mental health mm-hmm. and I you know it's just hard when there's like so many industry parties and everything but yeah after AVN and I think like expos was the last night I mm-hmm. I really went out after that I was like okay like no more until I shoot my showcase and yeah yeah and then how has the partying been like since you shot your showcase Are yeah you kind of like I've been I've definitely still been, find yourself pulled back a little bit yeah I'm definitely much more healthier with it like now I'm kind of like reeling it back in again because I got back into training too so I'm just like really realizing like how I feel when I'm being really healthy versus how I feel when I'm like having a little bit too much fun mm-hmm. and having fun is great but you know I'm really tr- like figuring out that balance now right because yeah. it's also like not that fun to you know just be eating a super strict diet and yes not going out not hanging out yes. with friends and like I love food like my parents were you know had restaurants and my mom was a private chef so like I really have a appreciation for food so mm-hmm. yeah yeah um so I mean speaking of like how do you balance like work and like personal mental wellness like besides you know beyond not partying or whatever yeah. like how do you strike that balance because I find that yeah. a lot of people these days especially now that with our cell phones and our emails are in our hands at all times and it's a lot of demand for our attention like how do you strike that balance yeah, that's something I'm, I'm still really trying to learn. I think uh, we all are. balancing, like, <laughs> screen time. Like, I'm starting to really realize, like, the effect it has on, like, my dopamine. I got, like, diagnosed re- recently with ADD. So I'm trying to, like, really pull that back into because I realized, like, my phone is just, like, a unlimited, like, dopamine uh, machine. Yeah. And not in a great way. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's also really tricky because my phone is my work. Like, if I could, I would, like, get rid of my iPhone and just have, like, a phone to Mm -hmm. answer calls and get rid of social media and everything. But unfortunately, like, my job is social media Mm -hmm. and, like, being a presence online. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's something I'm still really learning how to balance. But, you know, therapy is amazing yeah. so yeah may I also just recommend just because I found that it personally helps for me um have you ever thought about getting like a social media manager you know that would be great so yeah. Masha does that for me oh. and it's great because like I don't read yeah. the comments I yeah. don't read my dms most of the time like she'll let me know if there's something that I need to see but like yeah overall like not being consumed in that world and is is very yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still on my phone too much and I still check my emails too much and stuff like that. But especially mm-hmm. like after I had a kid, I was like, I got to find a way to pull back a little mm-hmm. bit, you know? Um, and I will say that like having someone do all that stuff and then I don't have to like worry about like putting up updates, and especially with how much yeah. I update my Instagram with all like the reels and stuff from my podcast. Mm-hmm. Like I don't fucking have time for that. Yeah. So having someone like do that for you is, I have to say, it's quite freeing. Yeah, that's really smart. I should look into that. Yeah, just a suggestion. It worked for me. Um, okay. So uh, do you have any aspirations to ever work behind the camera? You know, I'm thinking about it more and more. Um, like a few years ago, like somebody asked me what I would think about like directing a few scenes and um we just kind of never really got around to it. But, you know, when I first started, I, in the industry, never really thought about that as a possibility at all. Now, like, more and more, it's something I'm thinking about just because I, after being, spending so much time on set over these years, like, I see the way that things are done and I'm like, oh, no, like, this should be done like that. Or mm-hmm. I would change this or there's, like, certain little details. I was like, why isn't anybody talking about this? Or things mm-hmm. that, like, get overlooked that I'm like, okay, this is driving me crazy, but this Mm -hmm. is also not my set. Like, it's, you know, not my place to necessarily say certain things. Um, And I'm starting to get, like, a lot of, like, creative idea to to that I think would be cool to bring to to life. So, yeah, it's definitely definitely a possibility for the future. 
Yeah, and I found that a lot of times um, performers who've spent time in front of the camera obviously um, make great directors because they understand what it's like to be yeah. in front of the camera. A lot of directors have never been in front of the camera, so mm -hmm. they don't get what it's like when you're having like a really hard mental health day to put that aside and like yeah. perform and you know how exhausting, how mentally exhausting it is to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. It's really, I didn't know that until I did my Playboy, I hosted that Playboy TV show for a few seasons, but I didn't understand like that until I experienced it. And I was like, oh, this is way harder than yeah. I thought. Mm -hmm. Like I totally, one day on set, I totally broke down and cried. Yeah. And I had to like go, I, I was like, we have to stop for an hour because I need an hour to stop crying. Yeah. I'm so sorry. This is not intentional. Mm -hmm. I recognize that this is like unprofessional. If I was behind the camera, I'd be very annoyed with myself right now, but I literally like yeah. can't stop crying. And I need like, I need a minute. Yeah. And until I had that experience, I never got it yeah it's a lot you know well I hope that um I hope that you you know you nurture that idea because I yeah. think we definitely we also need more women behind the camera yeah too. absolutely so um so you have been in a long-time relationship mm -hmm. with somebody who I'm very fond of yes. many of us are very fond <laughs> of him uh Cody Steele yes. um can you tell us a little bit about how that re relationship developed um yeah so we met I think I was like maybe six months into my career. Um, I met him on set. I already knew who he was. I was I had a little bit of a crush on him. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't in the fan in the sense that like I watched his stuff, but you know I was like, oh, he's like really cute, and mm -hmm. I was very excited that I was gonna get to work with him. Um, it was for the scene is is on Pornhub. It's hilarious. Um, it was for a team skate for one of their sites called BFFs mm -hmm. and it was me and two other girls and then two extras. And it's like the scene is supposed to be that we're these like little raver girls at a rave trying to seduce the DJ, but it's like shot in this house with like, like a two story ceiling and it's like daytime and it's this huge living room. It's just like the five of us in the living room. <laughs> And him, like, in the corner as the DJ, and they wanted an hour of raw footage of us, like, partying and, like, in the, being sweaty. So they didn't even try to black out the window. No. No, it was so awkward. It was so <laughs> awkward. And, yeah, but uh, um, when I was there, like, I, you know, nobody was, like, flirting with him or trying to, like, you know, do anything with him. And I was like, okay, you guys are going to just stay there. I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. go, go over there. And, um, yeah, we like fold around a little bit before the scene and during the scene we had a great connection and then fold around after the scene too. And yeah, we like became friends after that. Um, and we ended up becoming neighbors. Um, I was renting a guest house from another performer and then he ended up moving into a spare bedroom of theirs. Um, so we were like, across the yard from each other oh. um so we started hanging out a lot and then yeah and then we ended up dating wow <laughs> and now we've been dating for four years uh so how do you experience like what's it like dating in the industry because i've heard some people say that it's easier to date other performers some people have said it's harder i know it's different for everyone mm -hmm. of course you know the general like layman has a hard time figuring how one can have a relationship with somebody that has sex with other people. Mm -hmm. So how does that, like, does that ever come up as an issue for you guys? Never. Um, so, I mean, my relationship with Cody is honestly like my first real relationship uh, in my life. Like I've had like little ones in high school, but like nothing really that serious. Um, so it's hard for me to like compare what our relationship would be like to anything else because I don't really know like anything else um but the two of us are really like naturally open people we always have been um so when it comes to like jealousy or you know how we feel about each other working with other people or you know it just it's never really a problem because that's just how the way we are um we even, like, fool around with other people in our, like, personal lives where we are, like, sexually open. Um, but ultimately, when it comes to that, 
it's easy for, for me to just say like that, oh, we're open and there's no jealousy, but there has to be like a really strong sense of trust as well for there to be that. Um, and with him, he's always from day one made me feel like I am number one. He's like, if there is ever an issue, if we're ever like, you know, if we're, for example, like having a threesome with another girl, he's like, if for whatever reason, anything happens where you're just not comfortable, you're not feeling, he's like, just tell me. So he's like, I don't care how crazy you may think you feel or actually are, you are my number one priority. So we can have fun with other people, but he's like, you, I want you to know that it, you were number one at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And then when it comes to like working professionally, like people just don't realize that like shooting porn is while like, you know, we do enjoy ourselves. Like it's, it's work at the, at the end of the day. Like, you know, I do not want to go home and, you know, stay with this per this other person. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of all about like who you come home to at night, right? Mm-hmm. I remember there was once a performer who, when he first got it in, thought it would be a good idea to send flowers to every girl that he worked with. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I, like, had a very hard time explaining to him that, like, yeah. it was not a good idea. I was like, and, and the girls never wanted it. They were yeah. very uncomfortable yeah. with this guy even asking for their address. Like, yeah, his dick was just in you for eight hours, but she's like, I don't want him to know where I live. Like, it just, and it was, and he was like, but it's such a nice gesture. I'm like, it's, it's work and it's like weird. It's just, just don't. Yeah. I had a guy bring me flowers on set once and it it was kind of cute, but also I was just like, yeah, it this feels a little bit weird. Yeah, because this isn't like a romantic thing. Like mm-hmm. we're our friends didn't set us up on a blind date or mm-hmm. anything. Like this is work. Like we're both being hired to perform a job. And like while of course like there's still like intimacy and you know all that. It's yeah. It's a very like clear boundary. And, yeah. You know, I like we both have friends that we love to work with, and like. For me, like, that's the thing. Like, I love to hear at the end of the day he had a great scene. I'm like, how did it go? He was like, it was fucking great. I'm like, that's awesome. And, you know, same thing with me. And he's like, if he ever hears that, like, I had a bad scene, he's like, well, fuck that guy. They didn't fuck you right. Like, (laughs) he's like, I'm going to have a talk with them because they didn't fuck you well. (laughs) Listen, you didn't fuck my girlfriend right. We need to have a talk. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. So um, what's your favorite thing about Cody? Oh, my favorite thing about him. Honestly, he's just, like, he's such a nice person. Like, I, especially in this industry, like, mm-hmm. there, it's it's really hard to come about, like, nice, genuine men. And I think just in general, like, it's hard to find really amazing men. And I don't know, for me with him, like, he's just ultimately, like, an amazing person. He is, like, so sweet and caring and honest and... Yeah. Yeah. He has really good vibes about him. What's the most romantic thing he's ever done for you? There's a lot. It's really hard to. I just put you on the spot. He's going to watch this and be like, Vanna. No, and I'm I'm so bad when like people, (laughs) even if somebody's like, what's your favorite song? I'm like, I like completely like have a brain fart. Um, No, but something really cute he did. For Christmas one year, he, like, found me this, like, antique, like, this 100-year-old antique uh, Tiffany's, like, jewelry box. Ooh. Yeah. He is, like, very thoughtful when it comes to, like, things like that. He gets very creative. And... So he's a good gift giver? Yeah. he He's learned. I've, like, had to train him a little bit. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah, we all – I mean, we all he's, need... he's better with, like, experiences. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. You guys were just in Europe, right? Yeah, we were. We were in Estonia and Portugal and Spain. That sounds amazing. Yeah. God, I love Europe. I miss it. One day I'll go back there once my kid's are old enough to not shove Play-Doh up her nose anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so did the porn industry change how you view relationships in general? Like, can you see yourself, say, like, you and Cody get out of porn, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And you get married and whatever, grow old together. Do you think that, like, you guys would have a monogamous relationship at that point? Or do you think that you would still stay open? No, I think we would still stay open, you know. Um, We're still open, like, in our personal lives. So, yeah, I mean, I think 
if we got out of porn and then we got married, like, I don't think that would really change that at all. Like, you know, if it came down to, like, maybe more, like, having kids, like, I don't know, that would probably maybe change things. But, yeah, that's really hard for me to to say. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. Well, Vanna, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to see you. And I have some questions for you from my Patreon members, which we'll do an exclusive Q&A afterwards, if you don't Sounds. mind hanging around. Yeah. Can you tell everybody where they can find you online, please? Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter under Vanna Bardot, just my name. And then my TikTok is the Vanna Bardot. And I think that's that's about it. Yeah. Okay. I, my only fans is Vanna Bardo too. Can't forget only fans. <laughs> and you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Go to hollylinks.com for links to all of my profiles. I'm on Telegram. I'm on Reddit. I'm also on TikTok, hanging on by a thread. They've been threatening to shut me down forever. I have a Facebook. I got it all. Um, and of course, if you want to watch this podcast live and get access to the bonus Q&As like we're about to do right now, go to patreon.com slash Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Drop Vanna a line. Tell her that you saw her on the podcast so she knows that she didn't waste her time over here. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.